Hey YouTube, so today we're gonna do rear brakes on a Nissan Cube. All right, these uh, Cubes, they have uh, rear drum brakes, um, which is pretty much like any other drum brake system. First thing you wanna do is you gotta get this, uh, um, this brake drum off, and a quick, easy way on how you can get that off is, um, well, there's two ways. One method is you can take these, use these holes here, and you can get some bolts, stick it in there, and you can um, stick the bolt in there, and as you tighten that bolt up, it will actually pry this off if it's really, really tight. That's a good method to use. Another method that you can use is my trusty friend. I'll tell you my trusty friend right here, and you'll hit him one good time, and he come off. <laughs> that was on a movie I saw one time, so, uh, but yeah, I tapped that one good, time maybe two times and then you know that'll be able to slide off of there one thing i want to show you i've already got the other side off but one thing i do want to show you about these drums once you get them off is you want a smooth surface on that drum you see how that surface right there is all chewed up yeah you don't want to put that back on the car because what will happen is it'll um mess up it'll chew your uh, your new brake shoes up and then you'll be doing this job all over again so you can either turn that or you can uh, get another one. I'm going to suggest that you get another one, especially when it's deep like this. You can see how deep those grooves are in there. You know, you spend a lot of time and you got to take off a lot of material to get that out. And of course, you know, the max diameter on there is um, <clears throat> 230 millimeters. But that's the diameter from here to here, okay? So you don't want to go without, you don't want to grind it out larger than that because then, of course, you're not going to have any brakes. All right, and what happens when you do that is oftentimes it'll push out so far that your wheel cylinders will push out and then you'll start leaking brake fluid down and then that'll become a whole nother mess. If these start leaking, you can push them back together, but I recommend at this point just replacing the wheel cylinder because you notice you have all type of debris and contaminants on there. So wheel cylinders are cheap, you know, $15, $20 a piece. I've seen some cheaper than that. Um, you know, it just depends on where you shop and what region of the country you're in. But go ahead and replace that. You know what I mean? If it starts to leak, um, go ahead and replace that. Um, also, I do like to use a good quality brake parts cleaner to clean all that gunk and mess off. All right, so now if you've done um, rear brake shoes before, this is pretty much the same job as any other car. I mean, this is a system that's been around for years. You have to hold down springs, one here, one there. I loosen that spring. Um, here, let me find the tool so you can see what works good on that. And if you don't have the tool, you can actually kind of like push it in with a screwdriver and then go back here behind it and twist that pin around. It'll come off. All right, then once those two release pins come off, then this will come forward. And, um, well, normally this wouldn't be that far out. You may have to pull the spring loose down here at the bottom. I like to pull one side loose, take that spring loose down there at the bottom, and then that gives you more play up here to take these springs loose. The main thing in doing this is you want to put it back the same way in which you took it loose. All right, so you remember these springs are this way. All right, so when you go back, then your springs are going to have to be the same way. And I recommend that you seat the top springs too before you try to do the bottom spring. The bottom spring is the last one you do. That's pretty easy. So, let me show you the tools you're gonna need to do that. Yeah, I know I'm a toolbox a mess. I haven't had a chance to clean it up lately. I've been rather busy. This is a brake, this is a brake um, adjusting tool here. So, you see this uh, piece here, right there? You can use that to make adjustments to either open it up or close it up. And on this particular um, vehicle, the adjusting hole is on the front of the brake drum. It's on the front of the brake drum. So, um, you see that extra hole there? adjust it from that but I usually adjust it and um, as I'm putting the brake drum back on and that's another reason why you want a good smooth surface on that brake drum so now so that you'll have a good template for once you take this off over here excuse me sir once you take this off over here on this side um, you only want to do one side at a time that way if you need to if you forget how to 
you know, where stuff goes. You shouldn't, you know. Um, but if you forget, like, which way these springs go, you'll have the template on the other side. So you do one side, tear one side apart at a time, okay? And I'm going to pause for a second to find my tools so that we can get this started. All right, so once you have your um, brake drum off, and, of course, get it clean. I like to use a good quality brake parts cleaner. My favorite is this one. It really works well. If you've watched my other videos, you've probably seen some other things. But the first step you're going to do is you're going to use this tool here. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to use that to turn these here. All right. See how badly rusted that one is? So that one, I'm going to need two hands to do that. But basically, you can stick it in there and uh, twist it. See how that comes off? And that comes forward. This side's rusted, so I'll need two hands to do that, but it's the same basic principle. Once that comes forward, then you can start pulling the strings off, all right? And after you get your springs off, remember how you have that off. You want to take that that um, that nut right there, that um, bolt, rather, and screw that all the way back in because once you put the new pads on here, well, the new shoes on here, and we're in this case, we're going to use the new drums. That's going to need to be all the way in, otherwise it won't fit in there. You can adjust it back out once you have your drum on there. But as far as assembly, put that all the way in, all right? And we're also going to change these. These are pretty simple. However, after you change them, they go on the back, and you know, there's two bolts there, and then there's a line there. But after you change them, you will need to bleed the brake system. So we'll get that off, and then I'll show you what you're looking at there. All right, once you remove those two pins, then you can pull this forward. You don't have to pull that up because there's a little tab there, a little tab there, pull that up. And then once you pull that forward, you see how easy you got access to that spring. You can easily pull that off, all right? And then that spring goes at the bottom. You keep all my springs and bolts together so that you don't lose them. Then you have the whole piece that will come off, all right? And as you can see, attached to the arm there. You don't necessarily need to take that arm off there. A lot of people do. I'm going to tell you, if you take that off, you're going to play heck trying to get that back in there. So, in this case, what you want to do is you pull that horseshoe pin there, open that horseshoe pin up, and then that whole apparatus will come off. And as you can see, it comes off as one unit. That's the front side of it. Okay. So, yeah, there's the front side of it. All that's going to come off. Now your new shoes, these are your new shoes here. All right, see how much thicker they are as opposed to what you got there. All that's worn out. That's no good. That right there is going to do nothing but cause you trouble. So also, um, of course, you didn't have any brakes, but also in putting that on, if you use the old drums, then you might mess around and damage uh, the new pad as well so you want to resurface your drum or get new drums in a case like this and that one down. but that tab as you see there's that other pad and that'll come through well that'll go through and all that stuff will connect on the front there but on the opposite side you see that tab there that's where that horseshoe pin goes in we're going to get that apart open that horseshoe pin up just use a screwdriver to open up then you can slide the whole thing off and then we'll put the new part together all right, so now that we have the two brake shoes off, as you can see, this is basically the apparatus there. And that's where we had the pin. So you pull that off and you have the whole setup right there. So this is your automatic adjuster here. You'll want to screw that all the way in right there. It'll take tension off the springs, then you can release that. Then you'll just put your new pads in the place of the old pads and put your springs back on. And then when you put it on, you put that C-clamp piece on the back there, like it was. It'll go on the back of this, right there, in that groove. And then you'll lock it down with the two hold-down springs. And then you'll put the spring at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get this uh, broken in. It's kind of tight right now because this is extended all the way out. But as you pull that in, that'll relieve the tension. Bad camera angle. Sorry about that. As you screw this and pull that in, 
that'll release the tension on their spring and you can get these two off. You could pry them off, but you don't want to take the, the you don't want to take the chance of damaging or stretching your spring. So. Okay, so we have our um, we have our new wheel cylinder on installed. Uh, one other tip that I want to show you about this is um, <clears throat> you want to go ahead and put this shoe on the bracket first. All right, when you buy new shoes, they'll usually come with a little C clamp. All right, the little hole clamp, whatever you call that thing. Uh, just slide that through the hole and then take a pair of pliers and squeeze that together. And then you push that up like so and reverse it back in there. Put your hole pin in and hold that steady, okay? Now I showed you a few minutes ago what it's supposed to look like when you have it all together, but I had to take that back apart because if you have it together on this one, when you go to put it in, you can't get that pin in there, all right? Because this bracket arm has to have some space to slide behind that arm as well once that, that's why that's so wide, it, it, it actually holds that arm in as well, tucks in behind that arm. So you wanna do it that way. <clears throat> All right, the rest of it's pretty simple. You know, you'll stick the other plug there, the other um, pad there, hold it down, like so, once you have that there. Then you can go ahead and put your springs in there, there, and put your adjuster in there. And don't forget to put your bottom spring there as well. So just wanted to give you that quick tidbit. Um, makes it a little bit easier to put it together kind of hard to film and, and pull these together because they're springs and um, you know I need two hands to do that so I want to show you the quick tidbits if you can get it off then you know you should be able to get it back on and get it back together and of course you do have your other side as your template so we'll get this back together and get it up and running if you have any questions or comments please post chat um, have a little bit of a wait for the drums we're going to put new drums on here now also when you do put the drums on you see this hole here this is your adjusting hole at the top of it so what happens is i showed you an adjusting fork earlier but that's a little too big to get into that hole so what you can do is you'll stick a screwdriver down in that hole and then you just work that up and down up and down up and down and what you're actually doing is you're making contact with the teeth on this and as you spin that around it'll cause that to expand out and that's how you adjust the brakes on here all right but if the rotors the drums are really bad then of course you're not going to do anything but kind of just chew up your new brake shoes that you just spent a lot of money on to replace so that's pretty bad right there yeah could turn it but like i say the max diameter 230 millimeters and I don't know how how much is already worn off of there but either way that's a different video for a different time um, also you know like I say it'll, the new shoes will come with these horseshoe clips if they don't I do like to save my old ones okay just in case and this is our tool for our hold down screen. so now that we have that one side together we can go ahead and Put the hold down pin and spring in there because you don't want that to move around. You know, basically you just stick that through the hole. Uh, if I can find it, yeah, stick that through the hole. And then you stick this spring on it. I will need two hands to do it. And that goes kind of like this, like so. And you take that tool and you stick that on there and push it down. And you twist it like so once that hand goes through the hole then it'll only come through one way it'll come through that hole and then it'll lock into that that's that pin right there you see it's got a, a head on it see that head that's where it's locking in so you'll lock that in then you'll lock that side in then you'll put your springs in there and with those locked in there you will be able to move it a little bit as you put your springs on there it'll get tighter and tighter as far as trying to move it and also make sure that these are lined up straight that notch obviously goes like so okay afterwards you know you may not have changed your wheel cylinders if you didn't change your wheel cylinders you won't have to worry about this next step but if you did change your wheel cylinders I would advise you to open up the port in the back and um, after you get all this together open up the port in the back and bleed your your brake system uh, that's a different video too 
Um, we'll check my channel and show you how to do that. But yeah, anytime you port or break open a, a brake line or something like that, you will have to bleed the air out of the system. So that's what that's for. All right. I think those are all the tips I want to give you on this one. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing back together and get it back on the road. If you have any questions or comments, please post, chat, subscribe, and share this with the world. And thanks for watching YouTube, and I hope you have a very successful 2021. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back to our normal lives this year. All right. If you have any questions, please post, chat, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing and share this with the world. Have a great day. All right, so, instead of getting new rotors, we were able to turn these. They're still within specification. So, we extend them down to the lathe and turn them. So, we get a nice, good, flat, smooth surface for our nice, smooth, flat surface on our pads. After you get your, um, springs back in place. Uh, one thing I want to point out, the straight spring goes in the front. There's a spring with a little crooked piece that goes in the back back there. It's also a little bit shorter in case you forget. Also don't forget to replace the bottom spring down there and to hook the pad back behind the little keeper. And you also want to make sure the pad is installed into the little groove there on the bleeder. All right, once you get all that done, basically you just take your drum Stick it back up there. All right, now that should be able to turn pretty easily to adjust that because remember, we did uh, have to turn this rotor, so it's uh, I mean, this drum, so it's the inside circumference of it is a little bit wider than you know what it would normally be. We'll make the adjustment by you see that groove right in that. There you go. You'll take a screwdriver and you'll turn that until the wheel starts to tighten. Okay, you don't want to get it to the point where it's so tight that, that wheel can't turn because then you're going to be burning up your brakes, All right? But you want to tighten that just enough so that, you know, whatever, you know, you can't freely spin it, you know what I mean? So, and also you want to be able to have it tight enough so that it holds this brake drum on here. All right, that concludes this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please post, chat, subscribe. Again, thanks for watching. Um, oh, that little tidbit. Um, you can, um, if the rotors are like within, aren't too bad, aren't too deep, you can uh, send them out to a lathe, or if you have a lathe, you can turn those, okay? But you do not want to, you know, get over the max diameter of uh, 230 millimeters in this case. It's different on each rotor. We're going to go ahead and get this side done. Um, just wanted to show you over the before and after there. We're going to go ahead and get this side done, put new hardware on this side, new pads as well. And um, then we'll get this car back on the road, up and running. If you have any questions or comments, please post, chat, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching and supporting my channel. If there's a particular video you would like to see, um, shoot me a line, email. Um, I don't mind. I'll be more than happy to try to um, provide that for you. Other than that, Happy New Year, and uh, have a great day.